if we recall we were discussing find tube heat exchanger. So, uh, we were actually preparing ourselves with the analysis which will help us to design a fin tube heat exchanger if there is a need. Now, for that what we want to do or what we need to do is uh, <coughs> do certain estimation, estimation of area etcetera particularly in the fin on the fin side and that is what has been done in our previous lecture. We will continue with uh, uh, with the with the results of the previous lecture. So, uh, you see the fin tube heat, heat transfer and fin efficiency we have to now, now consider. Uh, as I have told that uh, heat transfer that will be given by H A delta T. Uh, a uh, in that, that is actually in the fin side and h is the heat transfer coefficient and uh, this is one of the uh, one of the uh, aim to determine h uh, from the analysis which is now we are um, continuing to do a is the area we have seen some calculation of area in our previous lecture so h we have not done yet, a we have seen some, uh, um, some calculation in our previous lecture. Eta f that is your fin efficiency, uh, as fins are there we have to have fin efficiency. So, this is heat removal by the fin and heat removal if the fin temperature were constant that means, at the root temperature and equal to th that of the tube wall. So, this is how we can get our eta f. So, this also we have to calculate if we have to calculate the heat transfer because the area what we will get uh, that is not equally equally participating or it is not participating in heat transfer with equal effectiveness. So, we have to have the idea of fin efficiency. Then the total heat transfer to the fin tube array. Uh, is therefore, q dot is equal to h into delta t. Fin area has to be multiplied by your fin efficiency and then this is the bare area, uh, this is having the temperature of the bare tube. So, we will take it as it is. So, this is how in the not cell will be our formula, probably you know it, but as this is important. So, we have again repeated it. <coughs> so, let us go to the next slide. The effective heat transfer coefficient for the total surface taking into account of the fin efficiency is then H uh, bar that is equal to eta f a f plus a divided by a into H or some factor E f into H. See it is like this whenever fin is there uh, we are getting more surface area for heat transfer. So, uh, more surface area we are getting for heat transfer, but unfortunately the temperature, uh, temperature difference for heat transfer that varies that varies along the length of the fin along the surface. So, if it is so either we can take care of it, but uh, uh, it is always easy to uh, uh, deal with a constant delta t. We will not consider a variable delta t along the surface of the fin, we will consider only a constant delta t along the surface of the fin. Uh, so, if we have to do this, then what we have to do? Uh, the area we have to multiply it by some factor or uh, heat transfer coefficient we have to multiply by some factor. In both the cases these factors are less than 1. So, this is what we have already defined the fin efficiency, we have defined the overall surface efficiency. So, basically we uh, use the maximum temperature difference 
but the maximum temperature difference is not available to the entire surface. So, the surface area is reduced by multiplying it with a factor which is less than 1. So, this is what you are familiar with. Alternately, what you can do that we can think of that heat transfer coefficient for the entire surface is not equal and that heat transfer coefficient we are we are <coughs> multiplying it with a factor called E f effective heat transfer coefficient. So, then E f is the surface effectiveness correction factor and q dot is equal to E f h a delta t or h bar a delta t. So, basically we could, we could have used uh, our uh, concept of overall surface efficiency, but this is another concept followed by some of the references, some of the books. So, that is why I wanted to make you familiar with this particular concept. With this, let us go to the next slide. Low fin tube heat transfer. Actually, I have told that there are two types of uh, fins on the outer surface of the tube, low fin tube that is the fin height is small. And in this case what we do? The average convective heat transfer uh, coefficient may be calculated from a correlation. So, in all the cases we will use some correlation. Okay. Fin tube heat exchangers all the cases whether it is low tube, uh, low fin uh, tube or high fin tube we will use correlation and there are number of correlations. I am not going to burden you with the correlations. There are handbooks available from where you can pick up the correlations only for the sake of completeness. One or two, co two correlations, very important correlations uh, we will discuss during the course. Maybe sometimes we will give you a list of correlation, but that is not for uh, memorizing that is as some sort of a reference information for you people, because heat exchanger design cannot be completed unless uh, I mean we, it cannot be done unless we use these correlations. Many cases we have to use correlations and large number of correlations are available. Correlations are available for heat transfer coefficient, correlations are available for the estimation of pressure drop. So, here let us see how this correlation has been developed. So, average convective heat transfer coefficient may be calculated from a correlation of average nacelle number of the whole tube array. So, the average nacelle number is denoted by n u bar as a function of Reynolds number uh, and geometry of the tube. Reynolds number how are we going to calculate? One thing you have to understand that the fin tube they create passage for air flow which is not constant throughout. Throughout the fin tube the uh, area of air flow path cross sectional area of air flow path is not fixed. So, what we do? We generally use two area. One is frontal area of the heat exchanger sometimes it is called face area and we also use the minimum area available for the air to flow. The minimum area uh, available for the air or gas to flow that gives us the maximum velocity. As we are considering steady state operation of the heat exchangers, so minimum area will correspond to maximum velocity. So, here also we will do the same thing. Let us say we have got mass flow rate of gas is m dot, uh, V max maximum velocity we can calculate divided, dividing m dot by S min into rho, rho is the density of the fluid, gaseous fluid, S min is the minimum cross sectional area which we have already calculated in our previous lecture we have shown how to calculate S mean. I will again ask you to refer it back and calculate S mean or get the expression of S mean by your own uh, by your own calculation by your own derivation. So, please derive it. 
then Reynolds number according to uh, the equation one can get Reynolds number we have got V max we will take the uh, outside area uh, sorry outside diameter of the tube as the characteristic length rho and then mu the viscosity. So, this is how we will calculate the Reynolds number average Nusselt number average Nusselt number will come from average heat transfer coefficient the characteristic length that is the outer diameter of the tube outer diameter of the Bayer tube which we have also used for the calculation of Reynolds number and then we will use the conductivity of the uh, flowing fluid that is air or any other gas. So, up to these things are uh, simple only thing is that we have to be careful what characteristic length we are taking what characteristic velocity we are taking. So, now uh, our problem boils down to calculation of h bar or rather calculation of a nu bar which is a function of Reynolds number and which will be also a function of your tube arrangement. So, the recommended correlation uh, uh, is something like this. Um, Nusselt number is equal to R e to the power 0.7 S by L uh, to the power 0.36 P 1 by D t to the power 0.06 L by D t to the power 0.11 P r to the power 0.36 and then there are three factors correction factors F 1, F 2, F 3. So, what are there? Nussel number will be a function of Reynolds number and Prandtl number. So, these two non dimensional numbers are there. Then this is not uh, kind of a uh, simple geometry. So, many geometrical parameters are there. So, these geometrical parameters are there in the correlation. What do you, geometrical parameters would be important? The length of the fin or height of the fin that will be important then the uh, spacing between the fin that will be important. So, that has been given pitch of the fin normal to the direction of flow that will be important and the outer diameter of the fin that is also or tip diameter of the fin that will be also important. So, all these things are there and then we know Prandtl number take cares of the properties. So, Prandtl number will come here. Uh, then uh, of course, there are three factor F 1, F 2, F 3, where fluid properties are based on the bulk mean fluid temperature. This correlation uh, Prandtl number we have calculated or even in Reynolds number there will be rho and mu. So, these have been calculated based on bulk mean fluid temperature. F 1 is the factor for, for fluid property variation. So, this is one thing we routinely use for heat exchanger. Uh, actually, in heat exchanger there will be heat transfer in between the solid surface and the liquid or uh, the gaseous fluid that means, between the solid surface and the fluid. So, bulk of the fluid and the solid surface will have different temperature this difference in temperature may give rise to property variation and that property variation has to be taken care of. So, F 1 this is a factor it uh, takes care of fluid property variation because the bulk fluid temperature and the solid wall temperature tube wall temperature they are different. F 2 factor for number of tube rows, how many tube rows are there? Generally more the tube rows F 2 will come closer to 1 and F 3 factor for tube arrangement. Tube can be arranged in many different ways. So, uh, I mean depending on tube arrangement we can have some factors. 
so generally f that to f1 that is factor for uh, fluid property variation it is uh, calculated as a ratio of prandtl number calculated at the wall temperature and calculated at the bulk temperature f2 and f3 generally this the values are close to unity this correlation is applicable for liquids and gases with reynolds number between 102 to 10 8 into 10 to the power 5 so you see it covers a very large range covering so called laminar and the turbulent range and is based on experiments covering the range see the range has been given uh, for what range this has been uh, developed this correlation has been developed f1 as i have told it takes care of the property variation due to temperature variation so prb that means prandtl number calculated at bulk temperature prw that is prandtl number calculated at wall temperature to the power 0.26 prw is based on the mean surface temperature tw tw is equal to tb minus this one so bulk temperature also one can get where q dot is the total rate of heat transfer to the tube array so many times what happens depending on how the problem is posed so you will find that uh, the entire design calculation cannot be cannot be done <coughs> uh, explicitly cannot be done uh, uh, in one goal without taking the help of any iteration particularly when property variations are involved because for calculating the heat transfer coefficient we need the uh, property values and uh, then only we can calculate the uh, wall temperature but for uh, knowing the property values wall temperature should be known and bulk mean temperature should be known so sometimes you will find that a few steps of iterative calculation is required <laughs> <coughs> then uh, factor f2 takes um, the account of the number of tube rows approaches unity for large um, number of rows and factor f3 takes into account the geometrical arrangement of low fin tubes unity for common tube arrangement common kind of tube arrangement one can take it as unity so with this let us go to the high fin tube heat transfer high fin tube heat transfer is again giving some sort of a correlation so this correlation again in terms of uh, reynolds number and prandtl number and the geometrical parameter like the interfin distance and uh, pitch transverse pitch and longitudinal pitch p1 is called transverse pitch which is normal to the direction of flow and p2 is the is in the direction of flow it is called the it is called the longitudinal pitch so these two pitch have been important and then there are two factors f1 and f2 this correlation is applicable to liquid and gases with reynolds number range has been given and then some other geometrical parameters have also been given so this is one kind of correlation we get and uh, then um, uh, we can have uh, different correlations also there are many many correlations available so uh, another correlation has been shown below where the correlation is applicable for reynolds number between between uh, 5 into 10 to the power 3 to 10 to the power 5 and all values of a by a t between a uh, between 5 and 12 let me explain this correlations little bit so second correlation also you can see that uh, it is based on uh, reynolds number and prandtl number so you see whenever flow is external flow and uh, whenever flow is uh, high reynolds number flow so then we get this kind of a relationship 
where Nusselt number is some sort of a coefficient co constant. Uh, so, it is like this let me most of you know it, but even then let me write it n u is equal to c r e to the power c 1 and p r to the power c 2 and then probably it will be multiplied by some sort of a function of geometry. Some sort of correction factor. You see uh, already we are familiar with uh, heat transfer coefficient or Nusselt number, but here with whatever we have done from there we can see that Nusselt number is in general given by this kind of a formula. Some constant r e to the power c 1 and p r to the power c 2, c 1 and c 2 are again constant. Then if it is a complex geometry then some geometrical parameter will come that means there are more lengths which are important I mean uh, one can have uh, though one um, select one characteristic length, but other lengths are also important. So, then one have to have some geometrical parameters and then correction factor like temperature correction like uh, correction for some other geometry. Sometimes even we give correction factor if some sort of natural convection is also associated with the flow con uh, force convection. Uh, sometimes if the flow is not fully developed etcetera. So, do we give some sort of correction factors. So, these correction factors are there. So, uh, 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 two uh, correlations I have shown uh, the high fin tube for high fin tube heat transfer. Um, obviously, the correlation at the top is more complex the correlation at the bottom is not that complex, but at the bottom there is one term which needs explanation A by A T. A is the total area, A is the total area of the finned and unfinned portion of the tube. That means, for the fin tube certain fin area is there and certain unfinned tube area is there. So, a is calculated taking all this area and A t is the bare area of the fin sorry bare area of the tube. Suppose the same length of tube is there, but it does not have any fin then whatever area we will get that is the bare area and that is given by A t and here we have taken this. So, you see if you remember in our earlier lecture we have calculated the uh, area of the tube bare tube. So, that is important in certain cases that will be needed for calculating the heat transfer coefficient. <coughs> so, this is one example we have got. So, basically then what we have discussed we have discussed how the Nusselt number is to be calculated for low fin tube heat transfer surface and high fin tube heat transfer surface. So, in all the cases the definition of Nusselt number is uh, the same that is Nusselt number let us call it So, this definition we have sorry this definition we have used oh. <coughs> So, this definition we have used uh, a, a new bar a new bar uh, let us see. So, uh, this is k only. So, a new bar a new bar is equal to h bar d r by k 
uh, h bar is the average heat transfer coefficient and uh, dr is the root diameter or the outside diameter of the tube and k is the k is the conductivity of the gas which is flowing. So, with this one can calculate the h bar. So, both in case of uh, your low fin tube and high fin tube we can calculate the h bar. So, this gives us suppose from the external surface of a fin tube we uh, like to calculate what is the heat transfer coefficient sorry what is the rate of heat transfer we can do this analysis. We can also do this analysis or we can also use this analysis if the uh, fin tube heat exchanger is to be designed and we have to calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient u because in that case the gas side h bar you need to know and gas side h bar you are getting from this formula. So, you have to get the gas side uh, h bar from this analysis. Now, gas side h bar is dependent on gas side area or fin area that is why the previous lecture we have spent because we have shown you how to calculate the fin side area. So, that is important. So, with the previous lecture and this lecture with this two lecture we have some idea that how to calculate the fin side area and how to calculate the fin side heat transfer coefficient. Obviously, heat transfer coefficient will come from some correlation, but that correlation will require certain inputs will require uh, um, certain parameter which probably we have to estimate from the geometry and that is how uh, that is what I have taught you. So, uh, next what we will take up as I have told that due to the complex geometry of the fin uh, we have to have these complications and calculation requirement of calculation etcetera. Similarly, for pressure drop calculation also this uh, fin side is bit unique compared to tube side. So, next we will see how the pressure drop calculation for the fin side can be done. Now, let me tell you uh, one word of caution. I have taken up some example, but there could be other examples and there could be other correlations. Particularly, there are many many correlations and uh, geometry can vary to a very great extent and we can have let us say we can have serpentine kind of tube, we can have different kind of tube layout etcetera. So, uh, one has to be one has to take some sort of a judgment, one has to take some sort of a judicial <coughs> judicial action while selecting the correlations and while calculating the geometrical parameters. Okay. So, what I have told given it is just some sort of a guideline, but it is not suitable for all the cases. This is what you have to keep it in mind. With this we go uh, to uh, the fin, the efficiency of the radial fin can be determined by modifying the efficiency of the longitudinal fin. This is again I am giving some sort of a new input. Earlier I have told that okay, the radial fins are there. Uh, calculation of the efficiency of radial fin involve um, um, vessel function. So, what you do? We do not calculate the vessel function. There are charts or graphs. From the graphs, we can determine the radial fin efficiency. But even looking into graph, that is sometimes little bit time consuming and cumbersome. So, what we are telling that longitudinal fin efficiency which comes as a function of tan hyperbolic. Uh, so, that can be used with some sort of modification. So, you see I have given eta f l longitudinal fin efficiency that is given by tan h m l by m l all the uh, uh, symbols have their usual meaning l is the length of the fin. Uh, probably for circular uh, fin I have used a capital L, but L is the length of the fin. Now, for <coughs> radial fin what we will do 
tan h m sigma we will m psi we will use. So, this this symbol we will use and where this is given by the geometry of the fin. Okay. And in this if you provide d t d r or d t by d r close to 1 you will find that it is becoming uh, a longitudinal fin. So, basically then uh, we have not to we have got two ways now either we can use the chart for the efficiency of radial fin or we can use this kind of a formula and go ahead. So, the, the formula this is quite handy to use. With this I come to an end. So, we have learned quite a few things that we have learned how to take uh, how to do the calculation for the fin side uh, both the um, geometric calculation and uh, how to estimate the heat transfer coefficient. And then again I have told you a an easier way to calculate the fin efficiency calculate the efficiency of circular fins. Thank you and then we will proceed uh, with uh, our discussion where we will do the pressure drop calculation for the fin side. <clears throat>